Hey yo Antonio! In this video, I will share with you 5 natural ways of improving your eyesight. Following these steps will ensure you're doing the best for your eyes and your vision. So, without further ado, let's begin! Our first topic today is diet. Your diet has a profound impact on your eye health. If you've been around the channel for a while, then you'll know that there are two types of food that I recommend in particular. Green leafy vegetables and omega-3 fatty acids. Green leafy vegetables contain a high level of antioxidants such as lutein and zeaxanthin, which can help with protecting the eyes against aging. I covered this topic in a previous video outlining macular degeneration, so I would recommend watching it for a bit of context. Lutein and zeaxanthin are the exact same ingredients that are used to help stop the progression of macular degeneration in the IREDS2 study, and can commonly be found in nutritional supplements that are designed to do so. There is still a bit of conflict in the scientific community between the idea that lutein and zeaxanthin can help in preventing macular disease because there is evidence to support both sides. But the US FDA statement is that there is not enough significant evidence to suggest its preventative properties. Top sources of antioxidants include kale, parsley, spinach, broccoli and peas. Kale is one of the best sources of lutein with around 80 micrograms per gram. By comparison, a carrot may only contain about 4 micrograms per gram. My go-to green leafy veggie is spinach. They come in very convenient and easy to eat packets that I can easily add to my meals and can even enjoy as snacks. Next on the list is omega-3. They are essential fatty acids that the body requires to regulate body function, such as lipid metabolism and inflammation. Our body uses a combination of both omega-3s and 6s, which are known to be anti- and pro-inflammatory respectively. Having too much 6 in comparison to 3 can lead to things like chronic dry eye, which can eventually worsen your eyesight. Your goal is to have a healthy balance between the omega-3s and the 6s. But because much of our modern diet is high in omega-6s, it can be difficult to find a good balance between the two. Here is a table that shows the level of omega-3s and 6s found in oils that we use for our food. The blue represents the 3s and the yellow represents the 6s. What stands out to me is that canola, sunflower and olive oil all have significantly large proportions of 6 in comparison to 3 whereas the less commonly found flaxseed oil has an overwhelming amount of 3 in comparison to 6. The only problem with flaxseed oil is that it cannot be used for cooking, so I've heard that people use it as a salad dressing or an addition to a smoothie. Another great way of adding omega-3s is through fish oil, whether it be from fish itself or dietary supplements. This is a topic that I also covered in a previous video. In it, I calculated the amount of fish oil you should be taking based off of what the scientific literature says. The summary was that when taking 1000 mg capsules, you should take around 5 capsules daily, and when taking the larger 2000 mg capsules, you should be taking about 2 capsules daily. This should be prolonged over several months, and it can increase your tear breakup time, which is how long your tears stay on the eyeball before it starts to evaporate away. Diet, however, isn't the only thing that helps to improve eyesight. Having a fit and active lifestyle plays a huge role in the prevention of eye diseases, such as diabetic retinopathy or macular degeneration. When having a diet full of sugar, it can spike your blood sugar levels, in which case you are more susceptible to retinal bleeding, known as diabetic retinopathy. If this becomes worse, it may even develop into macular edema, in which case the vision is severely impacted. Check with your doctor what your HbA1c levels are, your 3 month average blood glucose. This is the best indicator we have to monitor this. 
This also applies for things like high body mass index, which can increase your risk of developing macular degeneration and papilledema, both of which are very sight-threatening diseases. Having a fit and active lifestyle can do wonders for your vision, not only for adults, but also for children, Yay! as it can help with slowing down myopia among the younger population, which we will get to in a minute. But moving along, next we have hot compresses and massage. This is something that everyone can do, and comes with a tremendous amount of benefits. Apply heat to the eyelids at an optimum temperature of around 42 degrees Celsius, and hold for at least 5 minutes. I either use a reusable wheat bag, which I can microwave for about 25 seconds, or the other option is to use a disposable one, which can commonly be found in Japanese beauty shops. The heat will help break up any dead skin stuck to your eyelids, keeping them nice and clean, and will also help the flow of oil from the meibomian glands. More oil means there is a good enough blanket for your tears to hold on before evaporating, so it increases the quality of your tears. You want a high quality of tears and not necessarily a high quantity of tears. For those that have tired eyes after being on a computer all day, or are exposed to dusty working environments, this will honestly change the way you feel about your eyes. After applying the heat, remember to apply gentle pressure vertically to squeeze out any of the blocked meibomian glands that weren't working properly. Our goal is to allow the eyes to produce its own oil, so that we do not have to rely on artificial ones. Keep the wheat bag clean so we can reuse it and repeat on a regular basis. A lesser known cause of dry eye, however, is number four, smoking. With regards to smoking tobacco, it has a significant correlation with the development of macular degeneration and should be the first thing that should go if you are diagnosed. The RH2 study indicated a two to four fold increase in the risk of macular degeneration amongst smokers versus non-smokers. Not only that, the dry smoke coming into our eyes can pollute the tear film, making the tears lesser quality. Other causes can include being next to an aircon or a grill. If you know for a fact that you'll be exposed to such contaminants, make sure to flush out any debris with some lubricating eye drops, because the longer the debris stays in there for, the more problems it'll cause. And last but not least, we have number five, which is our habits. The two that I want to highlight are rubbing of eyes and not spending enough time outdoors. Eye rubbing can feel satisfying, especially during allergy season. But bear in mind that eye rubbing is really bad. A good rule of thumb is to keep the hands away from the eyes. And if you must, there is the option of rubbing the corners of your eyes, or applying vertical pressure on your eyelids with them closed to squeeze out some oil. Excessive eye rubbing has been linked to keratoconus, which is a condition that I have covered in my laser surgery video. For this reason, I make sure I never rub my eyes, as I do not want my astigmatism getting worse. Speaking of getting worse, myopia progression, or the worsening of nearsightedness, is worsening on a global level, and its prevention remains at the forefront of optometry research. At this rate, it is estimated that 50% of the global population will be nearsighted by 2050, and this is a huge concern. Step one in delaying its progression is to go outside. On average, children who spent at least two hours outdoors daily were not only less likely to have nearsightedness, but there is evidence in Taiwan that it also slowed down the progression once you did have it. In my recent video about myopia progression, I talked about how outdoor time has a significantly greater benefit compared to simply spending less time on devices. But if you can, try to limit screen time to a minimum and spending time outdoors to a maximum. But that just about wraps up today's video on the five natural ways of improving your eyesight. If you learned something new or at least found something useful, then yay. 
thumbs up to you. If you want to thumbs up back, then they'll be greatly appreciated. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next video.